early visions of wireless power actually were thought of by Nikola Tesla basically about 100 years ago. What happened back a few years ago was a group of theoretical physicists at MIT actually came up with this concept of transferring power over distance. Basically, they were able to light a 60-watt light bulb at a distance of about two meters. The bulb was a fairly simple task from their standpoint. This all came from a professor waking up at night to the third night in a row that his wife's cell phone was beeping because it was running out of battery power. And he was thinking, with all the electricity that's out there in the walls, why couldn't some of that just come into the phone so I could get some sleep? And he actually came up with this concept of resonant energy transfer. And it's a resonant phenomena for which he actually received a MacArthur Fellowship Award, which is the nickname the Genius Award, last September for his discovery. So how does it work? Imagine a coil. For those of you that are engineers, there's a capacitor attached to it, too. And if you can cause that coil to resonate, what will happen is it'll pulse at alternating current frequencies, at a fairly high frequency, by the way. And if you can bring another device close enough to the source that will only work at exactly that frequency, you can actually get them to do what's called strongly couple and transfer magnetic energy between them. And then what you do is you start out with electricity, turn it into magnetic field, take that magnetic field, turn it back into electricity, and then you can use it. So I wanted to show you something. And I, and I know some of you are Apple aficionados, so you know, they don't make it easy at Apple to get inside their phone, so we put a little sleeve on the back, but we should be able to get this guy to wake up too. And those of you that have an iPhone recognize the, uh, the green uh, center and, um, and Nokia as well. You'll see that the, what we did there was put a little thing in the back uh, to do that, and it probably beeps actually as it goes on as well. But the screen, typically you use it to light up the screen. So imagine these things could go, they could go in your ceiling, they could go in the floor, they could go actually underneath your desktop so that when you walk in or you come in from home, if you carry a purse, it works in your purse. You never have to worry about plugging these things in again and think of what that would do for you. Thank you very much. De la même manière qu'une antenne va récupérer le signal de la radio, dans le, dans le corps humain, les cellules, les molécules qui sont dedans vont vibrer à une fréquence de résonance qui correspond à leur fréquence propre. Donc quand l'onde arrive avec la même fréquence, elle, elle capte cette onde et elle l'amplifie. Parce qu'une résonance amplifie le phénomène. Quand il n'y a pas résonance, il ne se passe rien. Dès que vous arrivez à la résonance, l'objet se met à vibrer de plus en plus. Un peu les gens qui cassent les verres en cristal en le faisant résonner à une certaine fréquence. D'un seul coup, l'énergie accumulée est tellement forte que ça explose. Ça accumule l'énergie. Et dans notre corps, on a les mêmes phénomènes qui se passent. Les ondes électromagnétiques peuvent faire résonner certaines liaisons chimiques de la même manière que dans les antennes ou dans les de cristal ou dans une cloche qui résonne. Et leur interaction dépend effectivement de la, de la qualité de la personne, de la, de la sensibilité qu'elle a à cette fréquence-là. This is a reality that energy affects matter. What we expect is this. I hit the tuning fork and then the, the receptor, which is in confirmation A, begins to absorb the energy and in the result changes the shape of the protein, the structure of, you know, the assembly of the, the, the backbone, how it's organized, changes that, and then the receptor goes to confirmation B or 2 at this particular case. So the point is this. The receptors, which remember what the function of the receptors are? They're the ones that signal the process. That the receptors not only respond to molecules, but the receptors respond to energy. Well, if they respond to energy, then why isn't it not, why is my medical doctor not talking about energy? Because I, as a medical professor, never taught them that in the first place. Why? Because when I was teaching medical doctors, that was not part of our understanding. And yet, I've, since my research started to take me that way, I realized something, that there's been papers in the literature that have been in there for 50 or 100 years, over and over again, in the hard stream, main core scientific journals, Papers about what? Electromagnetic fields affecting every level of cell biology. The paper in the upper left, 
electromagnetic fields, the effect on DNA synthesis. There are certain electromagnetic fields that turn on DNA synthesis, other fields that shut it off. The one on the right, pulsing electromagnetic fields induce cellular transcription. That means RNA synthesis. So there are electromagnetic frequencies that turn on RNA synthesis and turn off RNA synthesis. The bottom one, exposure of salivary gland cells to low frequency electromagnetic fields alters polypeptide, protein synthesis. So what's the point? These are mainstream medical journals. What do they say? that the energy in the environment can activate all of the main functions of a cell, DNA synthesis, RNA synthesis, and protein synthesis. More than that, these papers also show, like the one in the upper left, that I can get blood vessels to differentiate, grow, and form blood vessels by putting them in electromagnetic fields, just putting the cells in the fields. Or I can get mononuclear blood cells, the upper one on the right, to start to divide mitosis, in the field, the electromagnetic fields can cause them to divide. Why is that relevant? When mononuclear cells start to divide out of control, that's called leukemia. So in other words, I can induce leukemia in an electromagnetic field by causing these cells to divide out of schedule. Uh, this one is very important here on the right. Noradrenaline release potentiated in a nerve cell line by low intensity pulse magnetic fields. And this is the new area that's getting a lot of attention. It's actually illustrated in the next slide as well. Electromagnetic fields, biological influences. Electromagnetic fields exert effects on and through hormones. What are the function of hormones? Regulation of the body. What does it now reveal? High tension lines, cell phones, microwaves. They all influence the hormones of the body and then throw the body out of alignment by being in the field.